If you can get to a point where you can look at this reality, that everything in your life is going to be taken from you, everything you know, everything you love, everything that you care about is going to be ripped from you. And if you're like me, some of it's already been taken from you. That makes every second precious and every scene your altar. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Almost 30 started as a conversation about the transition from our 20s to our 30s. But then we realized life is full of transitions. So we expanded our mission. We are an intuition-led, wellness-focused lifestyle podcast that promises to deliver authentic conversations, diverse points of view, and insights rooted in optimism, growth, and intention. The Almost 30 Nation community is a group of purposeful dreamers who are smart, passionate, and always seeking the full potential in every aspect of their lives. At Almost 30, we're making magic together. We dream it, and then we do it. Thanks so much for tuning into the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. What's up? How's everyone feeling? How are you today? Me? I'm yeah. great. I'm good. Um, I was saying earlier, my butthole is tight thinking about taxes mm-hmm. and everything. It's meant to be confusing and A- it is. Adult things. I just don't understand like... Yeah. There's, I don't understand why if there's no taxes on dividends, then why are we paying? <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> come into our problems. I don't know what the word dividend means. <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't make sense no, to I me. I think just in general, like it's, it's funny. I don't know if it's just like a generational thing, but like there's like a gap mm. and maybe it's just like how I grew up and none of this was talked about or I was never educated yeah. on all of this, but I just feel like there's this big gap of things that I don't know a lot about mm. and that scare me and I don't even want to look at, but yeah, we're having to walk into the fire. I know. <laughs> and I feel like it's like, I don't, I like the person we work with, but I don't feel comfortable being really yeah. straight with them, but I'm going to, I'm going to be yeah. really clear because there's a lot that like is explained that I don't think I'm understanding that well, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I agree. I I think it's better to just say, I don't know and I don't understand. And I've never done this before rather than (laughs) fake it. Yeah. And it's so different as like an entrepreneur and like, I made more money last year than I've ever made. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be way more to owe. So that's just what I've like thought. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm gonna have to owe every fucking dollar. Mm -hmm. It's like you make it all and then you're like, oh, just kidding. And then we have to pay for Q1 right now too. Yeah. So it's like, see how that happened. Yeah, honestly. I was like, wait, what? And tell me how much. Just tell me. I don't know. Oh, yeah. The it's like, what do you want me to do? Just write you a check for like a Mm -hmm. a guess? Mm -hmm. Tell me basically. Tell me what. Yeah. Yeah, we have to ask him that too. That's another question. All right, guys. Enough about our problems. Yeah, enough about our personal (laughs) issues related to tax. I wanted to talk about something um that was so heartwarming and so, 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 so sweet. Uh, So a few weeks ago, we had an interview with on the No Filter podcast Mm -hmm. with Zach Peter. He is super sweet. We met him a long time ago at a Love Beauty Wellness Festival. He was the host and correspondent of the festival. He's a doll. I really love what he's doing over there. So you can go to um, hashtag No Filter to listen to the interview with Lindsay and I. Uh, But one of the, the beautiful things was when he was talking about uh, to us during our interview, he's doing a charity in Chicago and he needed help and support at this charity in Chicago. And we said to reach out to the Almost 30 Chicago chapter. Mm. They're so willing to help. They're so kind. And he did, which I was really thankful that he took us up on that. And he sent me the sweetest note about our sweet, sweet community. He said, hi, love. I just had to let you know, I'm standing here watery eyed and so grateful for the Almost 30 Nation you've created. Mm -hmm. It's been a challenging couple of months with the growing pains of an expanding business. And this morning, my full-time right-hand man resigned four weeks ahead of our next big event. I was truly unsure of how I was going to balance it as this team of three now suddenly became two. I posted in your Facebook group and my email has been flooded with so many amazing women eager to help and support in any way they can. I truly feel supported, uplifted, and immensely grateful. 
Thank you so much for creating this army of badass women. Mm, I have goosebumps everywhere. That is so sweet. So (laughs) proud to be uh, associated with y'all. Literally, you guys are, you guys are so just like, I'm so happy to be associated with you. Open, ready, willing. Always looking for ways to help and support one another. Yeah. There is never a a feeling of um, wanting something in return. Like the return, yeah, the, the return is just like the feeling of connection for them. You know what I mean? Like, which is so much more and felt so much deeper than anything else. So, wow, that's a, that's beautiful. And thank you for, for writing that to us and telling us that you didn't have to do that. And yeah. That thanks, really Zach. And thanks almost 30 Chicago. Can't wait to see you in September. Mm-hmm. Thanks for being so supportive and sweet. That is so nice. I know. In that same vein, I, yeah, I just, I think we feel personally supported too. Anytime we kind of share vulnerably, whether on the podcast or maybe on our personal stories on Instagram, anything like that. And I think on the podcast the other week, I I spoke about like dating and kind of how it's going. And I, I shared like my list for like the person, you know, my, my soulmate or whatever you want to call it. And I expressed something about like, ah, oh, like, oh, in the Jerry interview, I was like, oh, no one's really made me laugh, you know, things like that. And a listener reached out and she was so sweet. And she like kind of described her relationship and her story and just encouraged me to be patient with people and to like allow them to... Reveal themselves. Reveal themselves, become more of themselves as they get to know me. And she just was so loving and, and, you know, it wasn't like shaming me because I do know that's something I need to work on for sure. And it was just like perfect message at the perfect time. And she was so supportive and shared a little bit about her experience and why, like, she's like, in the beginning, like my husband didn't make me laugh. In fact, like, I didn't really think he was the one. He's like, now we laugh all the time. And like, I love him so much. And it was just really beautiful. So like, not only do our guests serve as like expanders yeah. for me, but even more so you all do. And when you share with us like that, I just, I feel very lucky because I am you, you are me. We are kind of going through this together. So just shout out to that lovely lady who who reached out. I don't have her name. I have to like go through my messages. Um, but I responded and I was like, girl, mm. you have no idea. I needed to hear that. That's hard though. It's very hard. Well, it's, I think it's a, you know what you want and- a delicate balance, you know, yeah. like there, I was talking to another friend today about, um, she's like, I heard that my, my friend, Sunny, who I love so much. And I lived with in New York for a very long time. She's like, you know, like I heard that you have to have three non-negotiables, but if he, <laughs> if he doesn't check off, uh, one of those non-negotiables or deal breakers, sorry, deal breakers that you should go on another date with him. Like you can have three deal breakers and if he doesn't, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. giving them that chance, even if it's not like sparky, sparky, magnetic, mm-hmm. whatever. She's so funny. She was on the dating apps for years and years, finally swiped to her husband. Mm. But it's just, you know, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of advice. There's a lot of like information coming in. So I kind of sift through like, okay, well, what really resonates totally. with me? But that message did really resonate and giving people the time, the space you know, cause not everyone's, I, I am like really myself from the get go. And I kind of expect that too. And then Mm. when they're a little bit shyer, yeah, I get like weirded out. Yeah. But I just need, what did Shaman Dirk say? Was he speaking about relationships? Yeah. It was all about relationships. Oh, I thought it was about, uh, the power thing with like being confident. It was like, if you're, you're cutting guys off because you're the worthiness? Yeah. It Maybe. was like... I have to re-listen to that. Yeah, because that was soon. directly related to that. Yeah. Like talking about the timing of like not letting guys reveal themselves or whatever. Mm. Yeah, Instead. I have to re-listen to that. But yeah, I mean, definitely working on kind of... It starts with me. The worthiness thing starts with me. and And I can see that kind of translate into friendships, into romantic relationships. But yeah, it's a lot of like inner work to be done, but like will do forever. It's one of those things too. Like I can't necessarily wait until I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. He also said too, he's like, but it doesn't literally, 
Mm-hmm. You said that and he's like, it's not forever. Mm-hmm. If you say it's now, it's now. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just like, what? yeah, guys, wait, wait for that episode. Yeah, yo, that's Holy hell. <laughs> it's honestly crazy. I need to re-listen to that one too. It's such a good one. Yeah. That one is going to be hot fire flame. Hot fire. Today's episode. I'm really, I'm really excited about. I know. Cause I fell in love with him. our main man, our main man, Jerry founder of love Rhythmia, him. which we um, went to and experienced, I mean, in the middle of March and it, it was incredible. And so much of what we experienced and felt was through other people's healings, was through his experience, his team, team of shamans and and practitioners, doctors really made us feel taken care of and loved and seen and supported. So one, thank you so much for having us and inviting us into your sacred place that you've created. So beautiful. But I'll be honest, and I'll tell I told this to Jerry's face, like didn't know what I was going to think of Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I did zero research though too. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's number one. He's number one. Like I was so pleasantly surprised. <laughs> so vulnerable, authentic, a little self-deprecating, which mm-hmm. I always enjoy. Funny, kind, warm, and a little... I love that he's been through some shit. Like I really like to be around people that have been through some shit because then they're not full of shit when they're telling people things. There's just such a, a not like a cred, like a street cred that someone gets when they've actually been through it and then they speak because they know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's so beautiful when someone's been, comes from such a dark and challenging place and they've made it out on the other side. And there is something to the way he speaks about his experience with ayahuasca that like, he doesn't give a fuck if you believe him or not. It's like, it's, he's just telling his truth and the way in which he tells it is not only relatable and funny and all the things, but like, you know, you don't smell bullshit. Like you said, it's just, he doesn't care if you believe him. He's just sharing. And um, yeah, there's, I mean, the we heard the wildest shit. In Ever. the world. <laughs> like if you were like outside of Rhythmia and you heard some of the stories that people said, you'd be like, oh. Yeah, some people had. And I believe every, there, wasn't, every there wasn't a second thing. I didn't believe anyone. Yeah, it was, so, it was really beautiful to kind of get to know people as we were there. It's a very yeah. intense week. It's very intense. It's challenging. There's highs, there's lows. While you're in a beautiful place and you're super supportive, you're doing a lot of work. Yes. I didn't feel like this was a vacay. You know what I mean? Like we no. went to do work. And you're busy. And you're very busy. Yeah, Yeah, you're on Because they just are really supportive with like integrative practices. You know, there's workshops, there's, um, you know, when you're opening yourself up in that way with plant medicine, you have to be thoughtful about what you're putting in it. So they do well with the food, they do well with the conversations, with the environment. So you're really busy with integration and learning. Mm -hmm. And and Jerry's story is probably one of the craziest stories Yo, I've ever so heard. it's so wild. So he shares that. And we are actually recording when uh, we were at Rhythmia and we are in Jerry's one bedroom apartment. Jerry, mind you, used to have six mansions, 26 cars, addicted to Demerol drugs, alcoholic, sex addict, asshole, you know, like yeah. the He like wildest. financed like, I don't, I don't know this number. I think it was like 143 of the plastic surgery centers. <laughs> In Los Angeles. Angeles. Yeah. It's like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he is an entrepreneur. And in 2015, he founded Rhythmia Life Advancement Center, which is the place we went in Costa Rica um, after the experience with plant medicine that he went on for the very first time, helped him overcome depression, suicidal thoughts, his drug addiction, and all of those things. And Rhythmia is a medically licensed retreat center, which focuses on the spiritual awakening and facilitation of that through plant medicine journeys. Mm-hmm. Um, so he'll explain it all. And we're really um, honored to sit down with him for him to give us his time and just honored to witness the miracles that happened at Rhythmia. So we hope you enjoy. We have more episodes coming your way from practitioners at Rhythmia and also solo episodes from Chris, me and Krista, mm-hmm. you know, just describing and explaining our experience and how we're feeling. And we're excited to share those with you. Pumped. You Pumped. can go to our website and our show notes to get a link straight to Rhythmia to learn more. 
Yeah. And we can't wait to see you on tour. We are in the thick of traveling, um, which has been so fun. We just kicked off the tour. We are in London. And then at the end of May, we will be in Denver. So please buy your tickets. That is almost sold out. <laughs> that one blew up. Whoa. Um, we're like fi- I'd say we're like 55 or 60% sold out on tour already. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Which is crazy. I love how people plan out. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's, that's our girl. I love that. She girl. plans. She's got she puts it in the Cali. Out. I know, literally. <laughs> she she picks out her outfit right now. I know, honestly. Um, and then we're going to be in San Francisco for a live show with Lacey Phillips at the Independent on July yes, 27th. Yes, you heard right. Lacey. Lacey motherfucking Phillips. <laughs> in the flesh. Guys, this is a rare sighting. Hey guys, uh, sync, Lacey Phillips. Honestly. Both, both intense concerts that you should attend. LP doesn't <laughs> go do this a lot. Yeah, she doesn't. So very special. I would take advantage. Um, so that's happening again, July 27th. Tickets are on sale now, almost30podcast.com. And yeah, just go to our website for all other tour dates. We cannot wait to meet you. Cannot wait. And cannot wait for you guys to meet each other. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. All right, more on the other side of this episode, but enjoy. Let us know what you think. Join the secret Facebook group. Love you. Love you. I just introduced my mom and my sister to this brand. Uh, They both suffer from UTIs on a regular basis. And they told me that it's changed the game, Eucora. Yeah, Eucora is the best. I really love that all the ingredients in it are found in nature. So it's a natural product. All you do is put this delicious powder in water, drink it after you have sex, and the ingredients bind to all the bacteria, the nasty bacteria in your body that would give you a UTI and prevent you from getting a UTI. Yeah, so not only sex can introduce bacteria and increase your risk of developing a UTI, but other things like exercise, travel, swimming, camping, if you're stressed out, maybe you take baths all the time. This is a really great way to prevent um, and really get ahead of the UTI. That is the key because once it starts, holy shit, it is so painful, so uncomfortable. I used to get them all the time, but I am taking Eucora on a regular basis. So easy and delicious. And we just really love this company. It's female centered and founded and we just are really proud to introduce you to this brand so for almost 30 nation you can get 30 percent off at ucora.com slash almost 30 and use the code almost so that's uqora.com slash almost 30 the code is almost for 30 percent off We have had the best time so far, and I, you are just such an amazing speaker. And oh, I would, and I, I took, read your book when we first got it, oh, fantastic. Shift the Moonset, yeah. and I loved it. It Thank is you. amazing and beautiful, Thanks. and I would love to go into your story. I know that you've told it, but yeah, our but girls okay. just like haven't heard, and it is like a crazy, awesome <laughs> story. So I'd love to, to Absolutely. hear about it. Yeah, yeah. So do you want to ask me? Do you want me? Yeah, to just let's start talk? from. Start from where? Mm. I mean, you, I want to lay the foundation for sure. kind of like where you come from. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, your life. So, yeah. So I was born in I was Scranton, born in Scranton, Pennsylvania, yeah. which is a shitty place, right? And uh, I was born in an Irish Catholic, Irish Catholic Italian family mm. that was quasi-violent, you know? And we hit women and children, and that was just normal shit. Screwed up school career. I got kicked out of schools. I was a fighter. I was just a bad kid. I was a behavioral problem. And uh, I got kicked out of schools. Then they wound up in jail. I got out of jail and I said I was going to do something with my life. And and I became financially successful. Not wildly, but but good. Mm-hmm. Financially good for where I was from. So I became a millionaire in my 20s. I took a company public in my 30s. And I sold a company for about $90 million dollars. Um, in in when I was 42 and then I I had quit working and then uh but during that time I my struggles were huge I was a, a womanizer uh a sex addict a uh I hit my wife I was a uh injectable drug addict I was a drug addict I was in pain just miserable always in fist fights 
mean at work or where were the fights happen? Everyone bars. <laughs> I was in a bar. I spent most of my life in a bar. Really? So like that was just I was always mm. in bars and and uh, and I had an insatiable sexual appetite. So it was I'm cheating. Cheating, but yeah. in the wide open. I just didn't give a fuck. You know, was that? Did I she was, catch uh, you or like? Always that- knew. You know, always knew of it, and, and in the end, she couldn't take it. And she was a super nice. Uh, lady, a really great lady. I have two two children with her. She's an amazing lady, and uh, yeah, and and I had tried to kill myself a couple of times because I didn't understand how I could have so much and still be so unhappy. I didn't mm. understand it, you know. And I, I guess, you know, I was a right like the things people. Sometimes people prop up how bad they were. Uh huh. To make this thing look good, I'm 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 making it look better than it was. It was really bad. It was really really bad, and uh, and my pain was super 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 overwhelming. Uh, you know, I couldn't do the things that I did if I wasn't in just a, an enormous amount of pain and completely disconnected from my own feelings and the feelings of others. Right? You couldn't you couldn't mm-hmm. live like that. Yeah. So, so it got really super, super bad. And, uh, I went to Passages Malibu. I met Jeff McNary and, and he's, he's a a human beyond words. He's a great, great human. He actually saved my life. The guy did, you know, got me to understand certain things. He got me to quit doing injectable Demerol Mm -hmm. and I was very addicted to it. What is Demerol, actually? I don't know. Is it pain it's a, it's a, uh, uh, an opioid family, but it's it's for plastic surgery. It's uh-huh. that thing that gets you. It's fucking great. Right. Honestly, if you ever decide. No, <laughs> and, uh, I highly recommend it. And I was super, super over it. I had 135 plastic surgery centers at the time. So I... Uh, you own them? Uh-huh. Wow. I owned or long-term man so in the... In the finance world, like if you control oh, yeah, the yeah, revenue yeah. for ten um, years, it's your yeah. revenue. So, so we had long term management contracts with uh, with all of them, right? And I sold them all in one, you know, at one time that was. But you're like, let me still get them all. <laughs> but but I had access to everything, you know. Mm-hmm. So so and I was a, a real wreck, you know. And so anyway, Jeff got me kind of going on the right path. He saved my life, mm-hmm. and then uh, yeah, and he became I think the first friend I've ever had in my life. The first. True friend, you know, not a drinking friend, just a real friend, you know. And uh, yeah, and so then I, uh, you know, he was counseling me, and I was in, I was in, I had him five days a week for almost five years, uh, about five hours a day for almost five years. And I was in other therapy, and I was going to Agape, and I had made friends with Michael Beckwith, and uh, and I was still suicidal and fucked up, you know, and I had. You know, I, I would have sex with three different women a day and, and just, and then that would create all kinds of havoc, which was a full-time job to mm. sort through all the bullshit of that, you know? And then, so I was drinking, doing that, doing cocaine, but just bad stuff, yeah. So anywho, I went on a vacation to, to uh, the Philippines and, you know, a woman who was a super, super sweet lady, who was a a friend of a friend of Jeff's, uh, saw me there and convinced me to go and do plant medicine because she was afraid I was going to kill myself, which I was. I had tried to kill myself twice before, but I was really seriously plotting my demise, yeah? So I went and I I did this, this medicine, and that was on July 4th of 2014, the day that I... I, the night that I mm. had my journey and I went to the moon on this medicine and the moon types, it doesn't talk and, uh, and it typed out this whole thing for me and then it showed me a video of me you know, being molested as a child by my grandfather and it explained everything to me why why I didn't trust men and why I was so fucking you know, crazy sexually and and why I hated everybody, why I hate them. It just explained everything. And and so as crazy as this and unbelievable as this sounds, the next day I was a different cat. And it was just like, 
I don't know, hot and cold faucet. Like one's on and one's off. It was a different, different human. And it told me that week I did the medicine three times and it told me to, to, I, I was, I was going to open up a string of strip clubs, uh, called the cockpit. In, in Which these, is genius, by the was, way. Was, was, I don't want to keep telling people because somebody's going to do it. Yeah, and honestly, and then, but, but, uh, but I had figured out this thing and, and it was a perfect retirement for me because there would be, you know, cocaine and the ability to mm-hmm. abuse women and women who like abuse. And it was just like perfect for me. And, uh, and the moon said I couldn't do that and that I was supposed to buy a place and and do what it did for me, for other people, which was it showed me who I was, you know, it merged me back with my soul and it healed my heart. And I even said to that, I said, are you fucking kidding me? Of all the people that you would ever pick to do something fucking mm-hmm. like this, you pick a cuckoo bird like this to do this kind of fucking shit, you know? And she was like, no, this is what that, everything you went through was so that this could happen and it was all this thing and all this shit. And so within two months, I bought this place. So within two months, I scrapped my plans of doing that. In October, four months, about three and a half months, I bought this. And then I closed on it in December of that year. So I signed an agreement in October. I, and then I looked for a month for different places. She, in Journey, she told me which place to buy, what to pay for it. Crazy shit. Like exact number? Exactly. The number. Exactly. And the thing is, it was a third of what it was listed for. No was, way. No shit. And I was like, look, I got some balls, but I don't know if I could do that to someone. You know? and, and they took it. Yeah. Crazy shit. And, and this uh, is, so this was existed before? Uh-huh. This okay. was a flex space for the Marriott over okay. here, you know? And uh, yeah, so I bought it and then it took us a year to get licensed. And now, you know, we're almost at 5,000 people that have been through here, you know? And, and they all have the same thing happen to them. And it's, a uh, it's an experience, I think, beyond compare from what people tell us by the time they're done, you know, Wednesday, Thursday are rough days, but, but, but by the time they're done, they just, you guys see how people leave this one's crazy, you know? I mean, we saw yeah. just last, last night. Yeah, it was that's insane. starting to happen. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. Gosh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And you guys, like, I'm so, I feel so blessed to have you you're oh, so beautiful such oh, beautiful ladies yeah. thank you and together uh, you're together people yeah, yeah i like it yeah thank you yeah when you when you kind of recount you know who you were before like how do you feel about that person? yeah so you know, sad for him i still sad. feel so sad you know that mm. and that's what drives me because mm. there's such pain in the in the world there's so much pain and 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 there doesn't have to be this is the craziest thing is that there doesn't have to be the level of pain that's out there in there. And these people, you know, that are, I call them the living dead or the walking dead, that they're just fucking barely hanging on. And, and they're not people that were as fucked up as me. I'm talking about middle of the road fucked up. They're like, have a job, hate their job, hate their wife, hate their husband, stuck with kids. They feel trapped and death and, they're looking for all kinds of external shit to make it go away. And, and it doesn't have to be that way. Nothing has to be that way. It doesn't life is a whole different thing. Uh, and, and it's all these constructs that were made that people just don't get that they're, they're put in. You have the, you have the split and then you have the conditioning, right? So the conditioning of you got to have this job and you got to do this and you got to do that. And then there's all this fucking shit and none of it's true. Walk naked through the woods. That's fucking true. Mm-hmm. That's real. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know. When you were breaking, so was it like your process? Was it breaking down your constructs and then like societal? Because you were, I mean, if you were that rich, you were part of a lot of constructs yeah, related in, to like. in the system. Yeah, in yeah. the system. So was it like you broke down yourself and then those systems broke down and you realized what yeah. they actually were? Well, no, when I, when I merged with mm-hmm. myself, mm-hmm. I immediately saw like, uh, at one point I had a, I had, I had a bunch of shit. I had like 20 some odd cars, exotic <laughs> cars and two planes and six houses, all kinds of bullshit. Yeah. And right now today, this is all that I have. 
Uh -huh. I have this, I have one car in the United States and I have a car here and that's, that's what I got. Wow. And I live in this. How good is this? Yeah. Fan fucking fantastic. <laughs> I, I love really? and, and the thing is this though, that, that it's not so much those things uh, because I'm sure at some point in my life, I'm going to have some, something again, a home or something, you know? Uh, but it's not so much that it's, it's the acquisition of more of it that so like you guys come from successful families right and and you know the the quest for the acquisition of more to fill up a hole that you can't fill up with more is a fucking mm. it's a just a it's a, a circular reference it just keeps going and and if you don't change you see old men, you know, older families, right? Guys in their 80s that are still, they have a billion dollars and they're still fucking trying to get more. They missed the whole thing that, that it is not about any of that, you know? If I think about it, my most adorable and delicious part of being in New York was having Melissa's cupcakes like yeah, I know. almost every other day. It was, dude, I was obsessed. <laughs> They're so good. And now I ship them as gifts yeah. all the time. The cupcakes are such a hit. It's like people take the pictures and they can even share it with friends and people mm -hmm. around them. And it's something where they can talk about it with other people. It's like such a beautiful thing, firstly, to send food. Secondly, to send mini cupcakes. And the mini part makes it like bite size. Bite size. You can Everything. try a bunch of different flavors. They're perfectly bite sized cupcakes in an array of unique handcrafted flavors. And they have like two day shipping. You can send it to anyone across the country. Um, and what's really great that for Mother's Day, and I'm sending this to my mom, hopefully she's not listening, but for Mother's Day, they have exclusive flavors. So classic s'mores, electric tie-dye, strawberry milkshake made with real strawberries, sugar cookie, vanilla and sprinkles, and the chocolate blackout cake. Um, the last day for standard shipping for Mother's Day, by the way, is Thursday, May 9th, and you have to order by 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I highly recommend Mom's Gonna Just Die for them. And if you just want to send them to any want or get them yourself, I highly recommend. They're delish. Yes. So for our listeners, you can get 15% off your order when you go to bakedbymelissa.com and use the promo code almost 30. So that's B-A-K-E-D-B-Y-M-E-L-I-S-S-A.com. Use the promo code almost 30 for 15% off your order. You know what I hear a lot when people talk about dating and in the beginning, they're so nervous and ashamed and feeling awkward and weird about like pooping and passing gas in the vicinity of the person that they're dating. And what ends up happening is the girl or the guy like holds it in. They have stomach cramps. It like is actually not good for your health. And so what we have for you is a product that we just adore, a brand we adore, a founder we adore, Susie Batiz, uh, founded Poopery, which really takes the shame out of pooping. Um, it's all natural. It's made out of essential oils and it is the spray before you go toilet spray. So you have to spray it on the surface of the toilet water, then poop, and then it's trapped underneath the surface. And all you smell is the beautiful essential oil aroma. And it is like, in my opinion, like the best smelling thing I've smelled in a very long time. Um, I take it on the road with us. So everywhere we go, I make sure we have a poopery because we're living in very close quarters. Um, I have one in my purse as well. So just in case, like, hey, if I'm going over to his house and I got to go and I spray the toilet water and he'll never know, or maybe he does know, but it smells nice. So it doesn't really matter. And I also have shoe -puri. They have a shoe -puri. So you can stomp out the odor in your shoes. So um, shoes, workout bag, yoga bags, all of that stuff. It works just the same. So really taking the shoe shame out of like natural things that happen odor in any way so we're proud to offer you a 15 percent discount on poopery.com p-o-o-p-o-u-r-r-i.com use the code almost 30 that's a-l-m-o-s-t-3-0 for 15 percent off your first purchase it's interesting because like 
I think kids are so perceptive too. Like you say, like you come from successful families and my initial thing is like, ah, financially, yeah, yes. I'm very privileged, but it's like, there was not a lot of, you know, my dad hates his job. He's I'm miserable. Sure. So it felt like, you know, it wasn't full for me. I didn't really feel no. like, wow, I have so many things that I'm so Oh, lucky. no, no, no. You know? No, it's kids like, are too smart. It's mm-hmm. so, it's, yeah. so it's funny. Not funny. It's just, like, interesting, especially, like, as we're journeying and we're connecting with that, you know, that five-year-old Lindsay. Yeah. And she gives you that look. And yeah. you feel what she oh, was, beautiful. you know what I mean, what she yeah. was feeling. Yeah. And it, it was never about, oh, I can have, go pick out a toy. Here's your toy. Yeah, like, it never her, made you know, I you understand I mean? so, so, so well. And you're so beautiful. Like, you guys are breaking my heart right now. Mm. Both of you are so beautiful. No. And I mean that, you know, mm. you know, for real in the, in the, in the most legitimate way. And, and I have to tell you, like, to that point, mm. you're in your 30s. Yeah. Uh-huh. When you speak to, and I call them kids, kids now. 16, 17, 18, 19, they're on a whole different tip. They're light years ahead of when I was that age. Uh huh. When I was that age, it was about how many people can I have sex with? How many cars? Can I, what, like, what job and money and fuck and da 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 da, right? And these kids are about something has shifted. They, they've seen that it doesn't work. Like, they've seen. That it doesn't, they've lived this where my parents were okay financially, but they hated what they're doing. They didn't like each other. Mm-hmm. They didn't like us. They didn't like, it didn't fucking, the experiment didn't work. So people are smart. We're so mm-hmm. adaptive, right? Mm-hmm. So we're smart and we're saying, well, that didn't work. So what, what else is there, you know? Well, no. It's interesting too. So it's uh, you know we're probably one of the some of the younger ones here. So uh-huh. most of the people some are weeks. some weeks are uh-huh. there. Yeah, because like I, I thought there would be a demographic, but there's not. There's it's not a demo, but most all. weeks I have some eighteen and nineteen year olds and some eighty year olds. Really? Like most weeks. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. And so it seems like a lot of people that that are in our group that are older, around their fifties and sixties, are working through like a lot of. What you're working through, so yeah. the healing is like yes, yeah, so intense. So for the younger ones that have grown up with the awareness and the knowing, I want, is their healing different? Like, what is their healing? Well, like? here's the interesting thing. Yeah, so if you believe this thing with the moon, and I do because I was there for it, that it said that everybody is split. So it's part of the human design to split, and that's the hero's journey. Is the forgetting, the splitting, the remembering, and the remerging. That's of your the, soul. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, I really, and I see it, and I see it every week, and I see it, I see it from both sides, you know, and, and even the young kids are carrying so much from the split. You know, the difference with people my age is that they really have separated from themselves because mm-hmm. you keep going further and further, you know, uh, yeah, so everybody kind of has the same experience. And what I love about this place is the diversity and then the commonality. So there's this huge, this guy's a fucking mortgage banker, and this guy's a financial guy, and this guy's a carpenter, and this woman is a nurse, and this woman's homeless, and this woman has this. And then at the end of the thing, everybody is exactly the same. Uh, and realize that they were the same the whole time. You know, beautiful, beautiful. But being a human, like I say this to people, I say, I don't care how how many years you've been at it. Have a couple years of dessert where you really appreciate the person that you're looking at and you really appreciate this gift of this, of life. Like it's a fucking amazing gift. And if you miss that, ah, oh, fuck, you know, uh, you know, on the medicine, you get to see retching. I talk about this a lot. And and in, until you see it, you, you have a, a, a mental construct or a mental understanding of it. But until you see someone retch, and retch is, is the outward expression of regret for having not lived. And when they, when they, Wretch in the in the astrals when you're over there, 
And tonight you guys will be over there because uh, tonight's a mm-hmm. heavy duty night. But when you get over there and you see retching, you realize that's one thing you do not want in your life. That like, I don't want to go. I don't want my soul to go and for my persona to retch because... To regret not having lived, right? Yeah, to, to, to really... And the thing is, I actually feel that the wealthy, that it's stacked against the wealthy. See, in Earth view, it's stacked for the wealthy, but it's not stacked against. So because the temptation to not live a real life is always there. To If I'm, if I'm a person uh, who can have sex with anybody because of money, then that seems like a quick escape rather than walking in the woods and getting to me uh, or walking on the beach and getting to me. If I'm a woman and I have everything at my disposal, uh rather than being alone and doing the work, there's too many easier things. I can shop. I can do this. I can go to here. I can do that. Uh So it's actually stacked against the wealthy. And that's why uh, everybody says, oh, uh, you know, fuck the rich. You know what? I'm going to tell you, they need it more than the poor. It's, uh, and I don't want to come off yeah, like yeah. that, but I can tell you, there's a lot of places, Costa Rica being one, where people are more connected with nature. They're more connected with their families. They're more connected with their elderly. Mm-hmm. And, and they're living a life that's much fuller. I'm going to tell you something. The average wage here is $867 a month in Costa Rica. We pay almost three times that. We pay three times what they what they normally make. Mm. But I will take those people, by and large, that's why this is a blue zone. That's why they live, they live in their hundreds. And I had a secretary, her grandfather turned 107, and it wasn't shocking. Like here, 107, God, if you know someone in California, 107 will close down the 405 for them. <laughs> here, it's just a very common thing because... They're connected. Uh-huh. They get this connection. And the thing that the plant medicine forces you to do is go back to your nature. So you go back to your nature and all the other f- shit falls off and you get back to who you are. And you know what? From there, you realize, you know, you realize your own beauty. You realize your own divinity. You realize your own connection to all fucking things. And you realize that this is a gift. It really is a gift. And and boy, if you walk through life like that, everybody gets nicer. Like, it's just the way it is. Everybody mm-hmm. gets nice. It's like, oh my God, you know, like, uh, like you see it, you know? Mm. And I'm, I'm, I'm bent on, on making sure that everybody I meet, I want to give them at least a chance. One day, you know, when I watched my dad die, if he had one day of understanding of it, his life would have been worth living. One fucking day. Uh-huh. And and so many people just need that day. You know, just a day to to realize it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen like the the value of the ceremony itself, the God, ceremony yeah. in life. I yeah. think that's why like places like this, you know, they do live People in Costa Rica and, and elsewhere live in ceremony yes. so much of the time. Yeah. And we just lose that. So so to that, you're so right. And I got, can I come in on that? Yeah. Uh-huh. So listen to this. If, if you can get uh, to a point where you can look at this reality, that everything in your life is going to be fucking taken from you. Everything you know, everything you love, everything that you care about is going to be ripped from you. Ripped. And, and if you're like me, some of it's already been taken from you. So that's what the thing is. That makes every second precious. In every scene, your altar. And the thing is, these people know this, that, that this is your altar. So everything is a ceremony. Me looking into your beautiful eyes is a ceremony. Us sitting here together at this time is a ceremony. And there's love and connectivity in it. But it's the same thing when you're driving down the 405 or whatever roads in Cincinnati <laughs> that, you know, when you're driving there, it's still a ceremony, yeah. right? I love that. Yeah. 
Mm. I want to tell the girls a little bit about, so we've talked about this in your um, classes together, but the things that happen most regularly during ceremonies uh-huh. for people. Yeah. So like the surgeries, yes. the death and rebirth, yeah. and then remerging with your soul. Uh-huh. Can we talk about this? Sure. So this, this in the, in the wrong context, will make people think we're absolutely crazy. Uh-huh. We talk about but, aliens a lot. But, okay, good, <laughs> yeah, good, good, We're good, like good. alien heavy. So I love that. Uh, I love that. I love them so much. I love them too. They're so sweet yeah, to us. I know. Some are. I love some her. Are, some are and some are. Uh, yeah. So, so 73.8 some percent. I'm a fanatic over data. Because uh-huh. cause what's happening and what your memory remembers happening are two different things. So we collect data to see the real truth of what was going on. So so call it 74%, 74 out of 100 people, will once they're remerged, will have celestial or sacred surgery. And, and these surgeries are done predominantly by three types of beings, yeah? By this, it's a mechanical praying mantis is one. And then the small silvers, they're small grays, but they're actually silver. And then the minion types. And that's now there's there's probably 10% of all different other snakes that will do all kinds of stuff. But uh, 90% of them fall into these three categories, sometimes all three at once and crazy, crazy stuff. And the healings that people receive during these surgeries are real. And the way that it was explained to us is that when you're remerged, see, your, your mechanics are set up to heal you without anything. So... No pharmaceutical company, no nothing, just fruits and vegetables. Your mechanics are set up to heal you. You're a self-healing mechanism. It's crazy shit. It's the real truth. You're, you were designed to heal yourself. Uh, it's, it's cooked into the design. Uh-huh. So, But sometimes from our split and our separation from ourselves, we self-harm in a real big way. So if you were to take a mother... Uh, cow from its calf. Uh Uh-huh. And that's what you're doing when you split. Same thing. And the yearning is always there. And yearning turns into dis-ease. Uh-huh. Just the way shit works. Yeah. So sometimes we're a little fucked up from the trip. So the medicine has to come in in the form of this sacred and celestial surgery and to to kickstart the process through an immediate or rapid healing. Uh, And it usually starts out as a as a numbness in your your mouth and your face. And it's so consistent how this stuff starts. And then uh, from there, you get asked if 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 I can go in you. You know, I mean, the, 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 whatever it is will say, can I come in you? Because mm-hmm. it needs, you're, you're okay, you know? Mm-hmm. And then you say yes, and then it starts moving shit around and crazy stuff happens here. Almost 30 Nation, summer is right around the corner. And uh, I got to say, tale as old as time, but I love a glass of wine at the end of the day when it's still light out, maybe a little sunset, catching up with friends or just by myself. Uh, So I'm kind of stocking up. But if you're anything like me, uh, you're trying to be more conscious about what you're putting into your body. And that includes wine, even something that I'm indulging with. And I just want to make sure that, you know, In terms of wine, there's no pesticides, molds, arsenic, any of that. So I found Fit Vine Wine and I just love it. These are really flavorful, beautiful, complex wines that have less sugar, fewer sulfites, and no flavor additives. Um, Although they are not organic, they do lab test all of their wines with the industry's leading third-party lab of the last 40 years. So again, there's no pesticides, molds, arsenic, including glyphosate. So I'm really loving the Chardonnay. Um, It's a classic for me and it's super crisp, kind of like has this hint of vanilla, lemon custard. It's super full bodied, which is my jam. Um, And then I love their Pinot Noir. I'm like, I like a light red and it's really... um, it has like a black cherry note to it. Um, I'm not very versed in wines, but that's what I get from it. But again, less sugar, fewer sulfites. So honestly, no hangover the next day. Obviously, don't overdo it, but two glasses and I'm good the next day. I feel 
amazing. Uh, so check out fitvinewine.com. You can use our code almost 30 for 10% off your first order. I would stock up. You're going to be going to parties this summer. You can bring it as a gift and you'll be able to just like open a bottle at the end of the day, maybe with some loved ones, friends, your significant other. Fitvine wine, F-I-T-V-I-N-E wine.com code almost 30 for 10% off. I'm going to let you peek behind the curtain a little bit here at Almost 30 because we need you to know that it's real over here. And we have struggles too when it comes to figuring out our finances, organization, um, really streamlining our pro- our processes as it relates to our business is something that we are learning in real time. And so we honestly got down on our knees and thanked God when we found HoneyBook. HoneyBook is an online business management tool that lets you control your client communication, bookings, contracts, and invoices all in one place. And this is really incredible for a creative freelancer or small business owner. And they just help you stay organized. Um, they have custom templates and automation tools. Honestly, like there's no way you can fail at this. It really is a path to um, financial organization success. You can consolidate services. You already use like QuickBooks, Google Suite, and MailChimp, um, which is really convenient. And I, we just trust them. It's been working and our stress levels have gone down so much. It's your business. And with HoneyBook, it's just going to be so much better. So right now, HoneyBook is offering our listeners 50% off their first year with promo code ALMOST30. You heard it right. 50% off your first year with promo code ALMOST30, A-L-M-O-S-T-3-0. So visit HoneyBook.com, H-O-N-E-Y, book.com, promo code ALMOST30 for 50% off your first year. Yeah. yeah, the one guy with the uh, infection in his face uh-huh. that talked uh-huh. at our group. So he had an infection on the side of his face and an eye problem. So uh-huh. the infection was causing the eye problem. And the silvers came and, uh-huh. you know, they were like, can we, op-? they came in front of him and they said, can we operate on you? And they were cleaning out his face. They had like little scrubbers <laughs> and they were cleaning out oh, the good. infection on the side of his face. And he said it was burning and could feel it going away. And then after that, they left and the praying mantis came and said, can I take a look at what's going on? And he looked at his eye and he's like, I think I need backup. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Though? And that happens. It's not a, that's he, not a one-off. Mm-hmm. That's a, something that occurs. Crazy. He had to yeah. consult another celestial being. <laughs> and then he came back and said, okay, we could do this and started working on his eye. And the guy feels amazing. And that's how stuff works. Now, yeah. but uh, another thing that happens too is that the, uh, Right, like where the bathrooms are in the Maloka up there, that a spaceship will come down and the people will go in it and it'll run a diagnostic test. Really? And we have so many people that get diagnostics and they're like, no, you're okay. No, you need a uh, something in your ear. Yeah. No, you have something in your toe. Like crazy shit. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And tonight's the night. Yeah. So tonight we drink yeah, hey. Yeah. Which What's is, the difference? Well, the simplest way is it's like, uh, it's all ayahuasca. Yeah? And most of it, though, is made from dried plants. Yeah, hay is made from plants that haven't fully dried yet. So it's it's a more earthy taste, you know, and feeling. <laughs> Sludgy. <laughs> yeah. Muddy. <laughs> and, and some sticks in there. It's crazy. Yeah. So what's, so the, so that's the surgeries and then the merging with the soul. Uh So what happens when someone merges with their soul? So, so we believe it's our belief. Uh It's not even our belief because that sounds weak. It's like, we believe that we know that people split from their souls and, and that the medicine will first Make sure that you understand who you are uh-huh. before it will allow your soul to come back because your soul wants to come into you. Your soul, it's still in your aura, but it wants to come into you, to your being. Uh huh. And so it's done, it's waiting, dying to do it. And then when we see it, oh my God, I become this mm. and become lazy or greedy or insensitive or whatever things I. Huh? And all of a sudden, the soul says, okay, now 
I can come back in. And when that happens, all the time that you've lost since the split is given back to you. So it's a, it's a, an exuberant joy that, that comes over you. And that's the first bump of that. Uh, this incredible joy that it's like coming back home, you know, like to your mother, and like coming home. And, uh, and then it'll, right after that, it'll heal your heart. Cause, cause when you left, you broke your heart. Uh huh. When, not, not when your dad did this to you. When you left, you, you broke your own heart. You know, the circumstance was my dad, my uncle, my mom, my neighbor, whatever the fuck. But the hurt was you leaving you. It's, that's the unforgivable thing, man, that you left yourself. And so that, that broken heart, because that gets healed, and then the forgiveness automatically occurs. Yeah, with that. Mm. Yeah, so so cool. it's a protective mechanism when it's split. Absolutely. And then mm-hmm. usually people's souls emerge when they die or well, after death. This, this, if, if they didn't do ayahuasca. This process, but yeah. it can happen anywhere. Oh, yeah. So it can happen in a Kundalini opening, can happen whenever. What What is interesting to me is it's it tracks almost identically with NDEs. So, so the death process mm-hmm. usually is a review, a retching, and then a forgiveness, and then soul merge. So it's the, it's, you're just beating it to the punch a little, yeah. you know, that's yeah. like, it's a, it's a shortcut. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Interesting stuff. Yeah. So I, I know you mentioned that you ended up doing how many ayahuasca trainings? 228, I think is tonight. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So, yeah. so through how many of those were you talking Continuing your conversation with the moon to kind of like, well, the first the first forty some were with the moon each time. I get the moon once out of twenty times now, Mm -hmm. and the rest of it, you know, I have to tell you, the rest of it, people say, "Are you doing this? You know, do you do it because each group wants you to do it?" Yeah, but look, at I'm a work in progress. I I need, you know, there's never enough for for me to do, and it's not an addictive thing. It's like I have to tell you what, every, on Monday, I started worrying about tonight. You know what I mean? Because it's like, I'm going to be shitting and fucking puking and <laughs> maybe yelling and like yeah. acting a fool and going through such pain. You know what though? It regulates my life and it allows me to clean the energy from the week before because there's a lot of transference of energy. So the thing is this is that I used to have sex with everybody and transfer less energy than I transfer here because there's this closeness when people are in a, a precarious spot in their, their, there's projection and then acceptance and then imprinting and all these different things. So you're, so it allows me to, to, to clean and to do this again next week and the week after and the week after there's a, a it's a lot. A lot of work. This this thing is, you know, and so it helps me with that. And and I'm a work in progress. As everybody, same same thing. We're all walking each other home, right? So this is just a part of it for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. What's some of your favorite things? Um, last question for me. What are some of your favorite things Miss Moon has taught you? Uh, I think to be more authentic. Like uh, I always wanted to be this. Casanova, business guy, loudmouth, look at me. And, and that wasn't even remotely who I was. I was this other, softer, just a, something so different from that. And so like the the me getting back to to me, the me that loved people, like I that feeling of loving people is a great feeling, yeah. It's a good, it's a nice feeling. And for her to give me that is a huge thing for me, you know, and that that I was going to die a very old, mad, sad, hateful thing. So like that, getting my life back is the gift of that for me. Yeah, you and said in our session that she said, I don't know if you said like, what's the key to life or just yeah. like something like that. But she said truth, truth like a bunch of times and then said authenticity at the end. Yeah. Which is 
so poignant and just, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something that we've been really working on this year is like being more truthful in all senses. Yeah. Like even it's when hard. it's hard. Yeah. yeah. Even when it's uncomfortable, even when it's hard, just being truthful and just clearing your conscience enough so that your truth is like is good. Uh-huh. You know, so and that you can who's it hardest to be truthful with? Yourself. Like the real fucking thing. Yeah. You know, the real thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. For um, someone who is curious about uh-huh. ayahuasca or, you know, thinking about doing it or also for those that are like, what the fuck? I know. Yeah. This is like taboo, you know, because, you know, we're, we're unafraid to have these conversations. Like, you know, we're, and we, and we want to like give our, our community just all the things we want the them to have, yeah. have the truth yeah. and to, sure to have the opportunity to, you know, experience as much as possible. So what would you say to someone who's a little bit skeptical? And then what would you say to someone who's curious? So my thing is this, is that, that, that when your soul is ready, uh huh, you'll hear this and you'll immediately, it'll immediately hook you. When your soul's not ready, it's going to say that's drugs. It's crazy. Stay away from it, and you're supposed to. If if your if your reaction is stay away from it, it's because there's more work, pre-split work to do before. Mm. And so so when you hear it, and you go, uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like a snake, where you're like, I don't want to. Can I touch that? I, 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 when you have that reaction that you're like, yeah. it's pulling, it's time. Yeah. So you can have fear, but if your interest is peaked, it's calling you. Yeah. And when it calls you, it's because you're ready because you didn't. Some people still need, they need more time to be split. There are people that are, that are 13 and want to merge back. Uh-huh. There are people that are 30 that want to merge back. There are people that are... There are people that are 80 and it's still not time. So, so you'll know it by the, not by your fear, by your interest. So if it's fucking interesting, to, it's, then it's calling, it's time, you know, it's mm-hmm. time to come to it. Yeah. And, and if you are going to come to it, I'm going to tell you, people talk about set and setting and it, it, it's so much more important than anybody gives it. It gives it credit for. So like the the one dude I was having breakfast with today, I forget his name. He's a, a nice a nice kid. Uh maybe he's your guy's age. And he was sitting across from me and he said, you know, he did it in in Peru and then in upstate New York. And he said, It's not the difference of seven and nine. It's the difference of one and a thousand. Like doing it here where you're held, where, where everybody truly cares, where money is not a motivator, where, where this, there's people that are just tuned into your mission, where there's a program of holding because, see, your light body expands so much on medicine, it can really fuck you up. You can like get, what the fuck happened? What was that I saw and have, if there's no pre-context, if you don't have the, the stuff to lay down this is what's going to happen, and this is, you can it can confuse this. I know people that for eight months are fucked up to beat the band because they they and nothing against the Amazon. It's a great place to do medicine, but they're speaking a language you don't know. Yeah, and, and then it's even worse. The guy goes to the Amazon two times, and now he's serving medicine in Poughkeepsie, New York. That's like what the fuck, mm-hmm. you know? Like, you know, I'm saying that's yeah, yeah, a yeah. common yeah, thing. Yeah. You know? It's more of an L.A. thing, actually, yeah. than uh, yeah. New York and L.A. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't imagine. I was thinking about because we've been invited to do it in, like, Beverly Hills at, like, a house uh-huh. or something. And we never wanted to. But I didn't realize so I was here how important the environment uh-huh. is. Because I don't, I have a, I guess I realized, too, I have a problem feeling safe. I have yeah, a problem sure. trusting. Yeah. So, like, to be with people that I'm just meeting is even hard to let go and feel yeah. safe and comfortable. So having the four days is important, but also like if I was in Beverly Hills for a night with strangers, like there's no way it would actually be traumatizing to It'd me. Be hard, hard, yeah. You know, so it is so important that we're here, and the staff has been amazing, and yeah, the classes are so important. That's the so important part it's of it. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's really beautiful. So we're so grateful. 
Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, we're so, so happy good. that you're here. Yeah. You know what? These are sweet ladies. You're really Aww. sweet ladies. Yeah, for real. Thanks. For real. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, just real quick, if people want to learn more about Rhythmia, uh-huh. uh, where can they go? They can go to www.rhythmia.com or they can call the phone number if they want. It's 1-866-936-9446. And, and listen, like the, the thing there too is that uh, sometimes people say, well, it's expensive or, or this or that. And, and, and the truth of the matter, the real truth is that uh, we're so upside down on this project financially that there's no way that we could ever be accused of doing it for money. It'll be years before we ever get our money back. And, and to do this the way that we're, we do it, it just costs that much money because there's so many, there's a cast of, there's a cast of 120 involved, you know, to, to make this happen, you know, that, that uh, our ceremonies are so heavily supported Everything from the food, like if this is a, this is a big thing to pull off, and yeah. it takes a, I think you can go and do medicine on someone's couch for two hundred and fifty dollars a night in L.A. And I guess as opposed to not doing any medicine, it's better, but it's not the place where you're going to get. You're not going to have the result. So if you're doing it for an experience that's different, if you're doing it for a result. God, please come here. Mm-hmm. Like we ask that people come here. You know? Yeah, people have really been seeing results and coming in with yeah, that. It's been I beautiful. I'm good. It's been beautiful. And then Shit the Moon said. Yeah. And then Mrs. Shit Moon's the moon Medicine yes, on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I can't wait to talk to you guys about this more. Mm-hmm. We'll see you next time. Love you. Bye. Jerry. Jerry. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Rhythmia. Thank you to Brooke and Meg and the whole team there. You guys are going to hear a lot more about our experience there. So stay tuned. We will be sharing our solo episodes, as Lindsay said, and then one with um, the doctor on site, Dr. Jeff. And then we're going to do a special uh, breathwork session. So mm-hmm. looking forward to sharing more. You can go to almost30podcast.com and there is a link in the show notes for this episode and for every episode that's related to our ayahuasca experience that will take you straight to Rhythmia. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Review of the week. You have been so generous in writing about the show and it means the world to us when you go onto iTunes and rate and review. Yeah. Thanks 2K fam. You guys have been emailing and sending this. Mm. This is from A B C D E F G H I T Y I I. That's all I need. Thank you so much. (laughs) You're a beautiful, special person. Five stars. This is... By far, my favorite podcast. I could not get enough. Just sis- just listening to the hosts talk to each other before they introduce their guests is so entertaining and enjoyable. Everyone they bring on is amazing and inspirational. I've actually listened to some episodes multiple times and I've gotten more out of it each time. Keep it up, babes. I love it. Thank you. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, T, Y, Y, Y. Love you so much. Thank I you guys. I want that to be my Instagram handle. Same. I know. Since Krista <laughs> won't give up her freaking handle. Um, thank you guys so much. The reviews help us bring on amazing guests. Help us bring this great free content to you every week. Um, it means so much. So if you have not, please push play, push pause right now. Write a quick review. And we appreciate it. We'll see you on tour. Mm-hmm. Yourpodcastpro.com for anything related to podcasting or starting a podcast. And Ambassador Program is live. So you can find more information on our website about the Ambassador Program and community events that are happening where you are. Yeah, there's about 70 of you out there now. And yeah. we are overwhelmed. This is incredible. <laughs> Let's keep it going. There, dude, it's the best. It's the best. Okay, we love you. Have a great week. <laughs>